I'm not too bad. Thank you so much for taking the time, especially on uh, such la- like uh, late notice, uh, especially on Christmas Eve. So thank you so much. No problem. Um, how are you doing this morning? No, no problem. Are we doing video or just audio? Uh, it's for video. It's kind of strange how we set it up, though, with, with our station here in Ottawa. Basically, they just catch me in over audio. But okay. we will be using um, the interview for television tonight on the National. Okay, good. So, because I can't see you and I can't see if you can see me. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> it's confusing. All right. Yeah, it's kind no of problem. strange. But just so you know, we will be using it for video, yeah. To start off, um, are you in Ottawa right now? No, I'm in Toronto right now. Okay, you're in Toronto. Okay, that's just good for us to know for the locator we put as a super. Uh, sure. for television. And to start off, can you just say your first and last name and how you would like us to introduce you? I am Raywat Dionandon, epidemiologist and associate professor with the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Ottawa. Thank you. How would you say Ottawa's COVID-19 case count compares to the rest of the province? How is Ottawa doing? Uh, for being a relatively big city by Canadian standards, we're doing well. We're in the orange zone, I think. We're not green, but we're doing better than Toronto. Our ICUs are empty, last time I checked. Our case numbers were relatively low as compared to Toronto, but the wastewater analysis and the reproduction number do show an upward trend the last couple of days. So we're back into the realm of exponential growth. However, the caseloads are low, so I think we'll be able to weather this better than some other large cities. Why is it that Ottawa seems to be doing a better job at fighting COVID-19 than other major cities, as you mentioned, such as Toronto? There are many factors that come to mind. We don't know for sure, of course, and there's also this randomness factor to keep in mind that we can't really control for. Number one is we are not a major travel hub like Toronto. Uh, Around the world, places like New York, Madrid, London... Toronto, these are places that received a lot of infection early on and continue to be reinfected by incoming travelers. While we do have an international airport, Ottawa does not seem to be having that experience. Number two, we have some advantages in terms of geography. So we are a little more remote from the clusters of large cities. We are next to Quebec, which is a problem uh, because Quebec is a high caseload zone. and We do have some travelers coming in that way. But we have a somewhat more dispersed population, a lesser population density, and infectious diseases love population density. It allows them to run more rampant. So our lesser density is an advantage. Number three is our socio-demographics. And this, I think, is the big one. Uh, We are a mostly white-collar town, a lot of government workers, a lot of higher-income people as compared to places like Peel. So as a result, people have the capacity to work from home, more so. Of course, there's some who don't, but we have more people who can work from home, more people with the resources to keep their kids home from school. These things matter. We have people who don't have to necessarily take mass public transit and risk infection and exposure that way. In fact, our our public uh, transportation system is not as overcrowded as the Toronto one is. So these things matter a whole deal. Some people say this is a case of privilege more than luck. And of course, we cannot quantify the extent to which people are actually following public health guidance. So there may be something to be said for greater compliance in Ottawa than we find in places like Toronto. A last point, though, is something to do with the nature of our living arrangements. I mentioned that we have a lesser population density. That also counts in how people live. We don't have the crowded tenements, the apartment blocks that large cities have. We have some, but not many. And we don't have as many multi-generational dwellings. So uh, grandparents living with parents, living with children, where the children go to work in more high exposure kinds of jobs, like barista or airport workers, come home, give it to their parents, who then give it to their grandparents. That is common in larger cities with a more diverse socioeconomic distribution. We don't have that. So the opportunities for cross-generational spread are fewer. But having said all this, uh, you can't really quantify the randomness either. So some of this might have been good luck. Um, But we have some advantages. The things that we can control, though, beyond the advantages, are the extent to which we are compliant with public health guidance. And to that extent, I give full credit to our public health leaders, in particular, Dr. Vera Etches, who's been a, a strong public figure in all this, and who's recognizable. So a larger city might not have as recognizable and accessible 
a public health figure. But if you see Dr. Wretches in their grocery store or, or wherever, you recognize this is a real person who you know, cares for the wherewithal of the citizens. And I think that has a, a marginal positive effect on compliance. So the province is putting Ottawa under a 28-day lockdown. Do, do you agree with, with the length of this lockdown? Do you think it's necessary in a place like Ottawa? I'm not going to second guess the decision makers at this point. I, what I will say, though, it depends entirely on what the goal is. If the goal is to simply have uh, some breathing space for our hospitals and you know, create some capacity in the ICU uh, beds, then a shorter lockdown is more relevant and applicable, especially for places like Ottawa that don't need that much breathing space. If, however, the goal is more akin to COVID zero, where we want to drive the case numbers as low as we can and then deploy appropriate testing tools to ride out and prevent a third wave as we wait for vaccine penetration, then it makes sense to have a broader brush applied to the entire province for a longer period of time. So my answer would depend entirely on what the long-term goal is of these endeavors, and I don't think the province has been transparent about that. Yeah, our mayor and uh, Vera Ashes, as you mentioned, they're asking for a review of this policy. Uh, they're asking for a shorter lockdown, essentially. Do you think that the province um, perhaps should consider a, a review of this policy if we don't see a spike in cases in two weeks? I think it's important to review the policy in real time, all the time anyway, in response to the incoming surveillance data. Having said that, what do you do if you see that Ottawa is staying uh, relatively stable while the rest of the province is chaotic? Um, you could open up Ottawa, but that's the case. You do run the risk of having an influx of travelers from the hot zone areas into Ottawa. Again, as I mentioned, we are adjacent to Quebec, so we do run the risk of having travelers coming in from a, uh, a high prevalence zone in Quebec that has more economic restrictions. So it only makes sense to me if we can also control the travel. If you can't control the travel, it's all for naught. So all this uh, are moving targets. And again, I'm not going to second guess the decision makers. I just hope they've thought about these nuances. And if they're going to make regional distinctions like this, there have to be additional resources to prevent um, inter-regional spread. If we see a bump in cases after Christmas, wh what do you think of Ottawa's ability to handle that curve given our current situation? I think we are better positioned to handle a bump now than we were a couple of weeks ago, now that the ICU beds are, are empty. Um, but at all times, we have low capacity, right? We have uh, the inability to surge as much as people might think. Now, it's possible to build more beds, and we've done so in some hospitals, but what we don't have is the capacity to magically create more healthcare workers. That is the rate limiting step. That's the the finite resource that we cannot scale up in a short period of time. So uh, with that reality, I'm always skeptical of any region's ability to respond to a surge in cases. So uh, it's incumbent upon us to, to prevent that surge from happening. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention? Anything I didn't ask you? Um, nope. I think that's, that's pretty thorough. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And like I said, this will air tonight on um, national TV for CBC, as well as a, a bit of national radio. Um, we're going to file for them as well. So thank you so much and have, have yourself a good holiday. Okay. Bye-bye.